People have asked me why it's so important to me to bring up how our language is changing. People will say, well, you know, words change all the time. Yeah, but not for political and ideological purposes. When words are changed for those kinds of purposes, and the way that they're changed requires using those words in a way that says, fuck you, to an existing culture, to the majority culture, I think there's a problem. And I started thinking about this more because of some of the answers that I got to my video talking about traditionalism. Now, I, originally I wasn't trying to say that everything that's traditional is bad. Um, but it... I, I wasn't very specific. I, I didn't go into enough details, and I should have. But I also wasn't thinking about it as much as I could have been either, so I appreciate the input that I got on it. Cultural cohesion is something that I think is extremely important, and is not something we should take for granted. It's not something we should just be willing to throw away. Because cultural cohesion is... Uh, is the cohesion of a civilization. But these words that have gotten modified, okay? Let me just give some examples of some of them. Racism, sexism, transphobia, misogyny. All of these things, according to feminist theory and sociological studies, now mean prejudice or privilege plus power. These words can almost be used interchangeably because of how much they've changed for those purposes. They've been changed for ideological and political purposes. They are changed in such a way that, let's say when it comes to sexism, well, it's not really sexism if, uh, if a woman uh, has a very, very nasty attitude towards men. That's not really sexism. And then if you try to just, just say, okay, well then, fine, uh, if, if we want to do these new definitions, then a woman who has a massive prejudice towards men. But then the person, you know, the, the people that promote these new definitions will say, well, you know, that's meaningless because uh, they don't have power. So no matter what you do, you're wrong in trying to suggest that women can be nasty towards men. Same thing goes with, with racism. You know, well, it's meaningless if people are nasty towards white people. Oh, that's meaningless. Because they, you know, white people have power and therefore, uh, uh, nothing that's done towards white people uh, means anything. It doesn't matter whether people are, are, are being prejudiced towards white people for the sake of revenge, none of that matters. See, it, it, it denies the realities of certain things. This is all for political and ideological purposes. Misogyny. Um, only men can be misogynists. They don't like to look at these new studies that have come out showing that there are just as many women who make these sorts of comments and have these sorts of attitudes as men do. But that clashes with the ideology and they don't want to look at it. Um, you know, th these things... I mean... Language is part of the cohesion of a culture. 
English is the is the primary language here. It's not the official language here. We never, you know, here in the United States, we never declared an official language. Although there's places in Europe where they have declared they they've declared an official language. Um, but the United States didn't. But it's still our primary language. And when the language gets messed with in such a fundamental way, it can have a destructive element towards the culture. Other things that are happening with language. Um, we're not supposed to use the, the word transsexual now. You know, oh no, no, you're supposed to use transgender. Well, why? Transsexual is more specific. Oh, well, that's, that's so dinosaur, that's so old school. Well, transgender has been opened up to mean the most trivial of things. Like I said in my last video, you know, there are people that, oh, well, I like dressing like this and I have interests in this sort of thing, therefore I'm a different gender. But, what? No. <clears throat> there are just so many things that are really, really messing with cultural cohesion. If you destroy the cultural cohesion of a country, you have essentially destroyed that country. I expect a number of words to start getting redefined, like capitalism will probably be redefined as something. And it'll be this really negative word. Word penis will probably be re be uh, uh, banned and you'll have to use something else because the word penis will be considered offensive to trans people. Uh, vagina will probably be kept because, you know, women, all women are wonderful and all men are terrible. All men are misogynistic or whatever, you know, type of shit, right? Um, money, the word money will probably be uh, redefined or demonized. Everything that represents our way of life will be demonized, will be, the language will be changed so anything that represents our way of life will be considered bad, it will be demonized. And the thing is, there hasn't been anything out there being shoved forth as to what's supposed to replace it. What is to replace the capitalism that we have? Are people are people calling for pure socialism, which we know doesn't work? Not really. It just seems to be a type of social Marxism that's being crammed down everyone's throats. Another element to this is, as I've mentioned before, there seems to be it's, it's like a weapon has been used against Western industrialized modern countries. This mindset that is catching on all over the place is like a weapon. Alex Liverant made a comment on, my, uh, on one of my videos recently talking about how, you know, it's interesting how when uh, People like George Bush said, uh, you're with us or you're against us. That was very much demonized. But when it comes to the whole feminism thing, well, that's, you know, that's considered okay now, somehow. Which I think is fucked up, but... The New Kid, I I'll leave a link to his video in the description bar. He brought up a really good point to counter the type of shit that people like Aaron Raw say. Where, you know, oh, if you're not a feminist, then you're against women's rights and you want women to be treated like shit and blah, blah, fucking blah, right? Um, the new kid was saying, well, uh, if you go by dictionary definitions, uh, then by, uh, just, just by definition, uh, Everyone is Catholic. And using the same 
uh, type of thing. And if you say that you're not Catholic, well, then you don't believe in any sort of diversity or acceptance or any of that. Again, I'll leave a link to his video so you can see what I'm talking about. I think he, he said it very well in that. Um, but people aren't, aren't breaking apart this, the, this feminist theory or the, this whole SJW thing. They're not, people aren't breaking it apart realistically. They're not using the same standards for it as they are everything else. It has all the trappings of a religion. All the trappings of the religion. All of that victim mentality of religion where, oh, everyone's going to hate you, so you need to be more vigilant. You know, the same sort of bullshit of, you know, how Christians will, will claim they're being persecuted and treated unfairly uh, because people call bullshit on the stuff that they're saying. Well, the same sort of thing is applying to this uh, intersectional third-wave feminism, uh, other feels phobia, SJW bullshit. Same sort of thing. But this new SJWism stuff that's going on is actually far more damaging than religion has been, than actual religion has been. You know, religion doesn't sit there and try to attach itself to every uh, every rights and activism movement out there. They don't attach themselves to those, take them over, and then make it seem like, well, if you uh, if you disagree with any one part of this, then you're against all these things. Religion doesn't do that. Religion doesn't go to those extremes. You know, this is far more damaging than most religions. Far more damaging. You know, I mean, it's been... You know, I kind, it kind of seems like it started around 2003. And just continued to progress from there. But it's been especially the past five years that this shit has just went to insane proportions and it causes damage all the way along every everything that this ideology t touches turns to shit it d and it's destroying our cultural cohesion how how can this not be considered a weapon? It's like it was, it was thrusted onto Western industrialized countries to destroy them. And it is, it's destroying, it's destroying Western industrialized countries. What's it to be replaced with? Now, unfortunately I've been that video that I made trying to show that the uh, statements from Barbara Lerner Spector had some other context to it. And tons and tons of people have been just hounding me about, well, how can you... Look, look at what she's saying. Look at the fact that she's saying uh, Jews will be resented for their leading role and... Uh, that uh, these these transformations must take place, you know. And yet, Israel, Israel isn't just letting all these different cultures in. Israel is is having a massive, strong cultural cohesion. But all the rest of the countries, all the Western industrialized countries, are supposed to just completely lose their cultural cohesion. How is that supposed to work? And isn't, isn't that a massive double standard? But I don't, don't like looking at that. I don't like looking at that. I'm, I've been trying... I've been trying to find some information that... Uh, either shows that, that that concept is bullshit or 
something that shows that it's true. But all I get is propaganda on every side. Um, you know, I have, there's one side that just makes Israel look wonderful, everything's so great, uh, doesn't matter how they're treating uh, the Palestinians. And then you've got, you know, the other side that, you know, completely demonizes uh, Israel and demonizes Jewish people. And these sources either try to shove forth that uh, if one uh, messes with cultural cohesion, they're trying to exterminate a race. You know, so they're, they're trying to say that, oh, well, that's, uh, uh, that's genocide. And I'm like, oh, come on now. Don't stretch words like that. That's the same stretching of words that the SJWs do, right? Then there's other sources that try to shove forth that, uh, um, that white people are superior kind of shit. I mean, I mean, just these sources are just crap. They are obviously propaganda. You know, mostly nationalistic propaganda. And, you know, I can't really take any of those things seriously. And it's hard to separate the truth from the propaganda. You know, I, I can continue trying to read up on it from all these different sides, but it's just like, where is the truth? We are definitely living in interesting times. You know, I, I hope that myself and billions of other people aren't going to be dead in 10 years from a collapse of Western industrialized countries. I mean, if some sort of one world government ends up replacing it, replacing what we have, okay, at least there's something. Or maybe it'll be a theocracy that replaces it. Or maybe it will be a monarchy that replaces it. But it's certainly not going to be replaced with capitalism. It's certainly not going to be replaced with socialism. It will be something else. But what will that be? I'm hoping it doesn't even come to this and that we will survive and that we will figure out this weapon that has been used against us that's destroying our cultural cohesion. Um, then again, just my using the phrase cultural cohesion could be seen as nationalistic propaganda. And as if I am promoting nationalistic propaganda. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing. And it's very difficult to see the truth through any of this shit. So what do we do? I have no idea. I know that we need to reject this completely changing our language for ideological and political purposes. We must reject this. This sort of thing has not been done on this kind of widespread uh, level uh, really in our history. Our way of life has not been called into question and demonized nearly as much as right now. Now, as I think that we need to uh, to throw away ideas that uh, are harmful, whether they're new ideas or traditional ideas, there are some things that we do and have done that the reason why they're done that way is because it has been proven over time to be the way that seems to work best. So. Again, thank you to those who made comments on my video regarding traditionalism. Because I wasn't thinking nearly as deeply about certain elements to that as I could have been. So, thank you to uh, my subscribers and my viewers. And thank you to those who have really gotten me to think. I really appreciate it.
I don't want to be in some sort of echo chamber. And sometimes I will look at things that we're not really supposed to look at, like the issue of Israel in what I described earlier. That's like the biggest taboo subject you can't talk about. And I'm not going to say anything one way or the other in any sort of definitive way. Because the truth is so difficult to find. Now if people, people watching this video, if you have some, some reasonable sources that are not, that are not just seeming like a bunch of propaganda and are not seeming like uh, you're promoting conspiracy theories on a, a ridiculous level, um, like, you know, someone trying to get me to look at some sort of Alex Jones conspiracy and, uh, oh, look, well, see, this, this person said this, therefore it's true. You know, give, give, me, give, me, some, give me some reasonable sources. Anyway, thanks for watching.